young people. Look at Carrie Means, ladies and gentlemen. It's the OG, the GOAT, George M. F. and Lowe. And this is Rod Khan. Yes, and we're live here. This is for any uh, law enforcement authorities who might be looking for some guy named Kerry Means. I don't know who he is. Never seen him before in my life. I'm Frylock. <laughs> that Kerry Means guy, I don't know who that is. I have to open my special medicine. All right. He's got the good stuff. See him after the show. Shall we clap down? <laughs> Let's clap down. I know. Open my special medicine. All right. He's got the good stuff. See him after the show. Shall we climb down and do what we do best? Let's clap now. I know, let's sit and talk. <laughs> we don't need no stinky microphones. We don't need no microphones. Ah, no. A room full of perplexed people gather to see what happens. <laughs> do they need scripts? No, we don't need no stinking scripts. No, sir, we don't need none of that. We get this. Now, in case it gets blue accidentally, everyone's okay? Like, your kids won't be traumatized if we pop out with the occasional horrible thing. We're asking permission now. This boy is already ready to see the parents. <laughs> <laughs> it's all like... Mom, Dad, they said some things. He already had been the same since the flipper season finale when they turned him into a salad. What's, up, What's your favorite part? The, the nose or the bottle? Oh, you've got to have the blowhole for blow my money. A big bowl full of blowholes, man. <laughs> That's the good eating there, kids. Am I right? Yes, sir. Who wants the last blowhole? <laughs> Harry? Harry? No, I guess. I had my fill of blowholes <laughs> in college. <laughs> Somehow this took a different turn than I anticipated. All right, now we're on to the blowhole. <laughs> they didn't even come and get us to come to this thing. We had to rely on Carl over here. <laughs> yeah, I think the bounce your thing, Fry Man. Yeah, it was like a uh, <laughs> kind of no words. Some yeah. beastie dealing with Carl. I think Carl has died more heinous ways than Kenny from South Park. Ever has. Kenny, Kenny he just gets pulled apart by rats or something. And Carl was just, just disemboweled. And, wow, good, the guy's good green earth would that try like build a toilet. In the front lawn. That was the one you and I soloed. They had me up on the antenna trying to get you off. And, and let's hear the line. The bleeding. classic ad lib line that Papa George ad lived. There was a massive chunk of that. And I said, you know, you guys never give me a writer's credit. They're like, what, what are you going to do? And I did that whole thing, that whole monologue, including when you pushed me off, yelling out the agent's name. Oh, call the headshots. Pussy, but well, okay. I thought you slipped. Fried log. I thought you slipped. You are salty and crispy and flavorful. <laughs> so for what you do for America's youth. <laughs> yeah, and I remember you played the sleazy detective that got a lot of action. What was, what was the name of the detective? Oh, was that Assie Assie McGee? No, it wasn't. <laughs> I, I was Assie McGee. I was actually the doctor on the Talking Butt Cheeks. You were? Yeah. The Robert Stein. I'm sorry. I didn't see that show lasted too long. Oh, I was I think it was Matt Harris. <laughs> we had like nine episodes or something and it went away. Talking to you. Assie McGee was the dick. Well, the way he's trying to get here and block it or something. This man's dead. Call the time at 324. The doctor's hand just moved over it. What the hell? 325, he's alive and okay, fine. But George started off as a guest, guest star on Aqua Team. And they called him up so much and just made him, they just finally made him a member unofficially of the cast. What's that line from the movie? The space Ghost says he just, just smelled You smell a missile? <laughs> just smell a missile, kind of. Yeah, and, and also I love Jet Chicken. Jet Chicken and Jet Chicken in Rocket Horse. <laughs> Jet Chicken. It's kind of like now what my life has become. Now I'm sitting like in a gas station. Maybe that's what he. Autograph. Maybe that's what he got the idea from Bojack Horseman. Made mm. could be. Mm. Made me walk from Jim Cole. I can't get into Bojack Horseman. I just. I don't get it. Just like that's like Eric Andre. <laughs> Okay, get into the air What the hell is that? By the way, on the flight up, I was going to tell you, you know, the, the airplane magazine, which is completely worthless. Have I ever mentioned that every airline magazine is completely worthless? 
they'll have one good thing and it's always on the last page to make you want to look the next time you're in. What's that Ken noise? Lynch enjoys who's, papaya. Who's talking? What was that? Batman, are you just texting somebody right there? What's going on? But they have the best doctors in America. I swear to you, they had a guy in Atlanta named Dr. Hyman. I swear, ladies, tell the truth, he was an orthopedic surgeon. Wouldn't you think with that name he would have been an OB? <laughs> I say these things out loud. Kids, never your chance. If there's a game run or a puppet show, <laughs> Now's your chance because I'm banned in Huntsville, Alabama. <laughs> would you like to hear the joke, Carrie, that banned Yes, it? I would. It's a little segment that Carrie knows and loves that I do called Six Second Joke. And Six Second Joke is brought to you each and every week by Chung Brothers, all game wieners. They plump when you touch them. And now, <laughs> Six Second Joke. Guy goes to the doctor. The doctor says you've got to stop masturbating. The guy says, why? The doctor says, so I can examine you. <laughs> Six second joke. Brought to you each and every time by Pirate's Loop. Get your vessel through the channel quicker with Pirate's Loop. Now in the pillaging size. Arrgh! It's tasty. Comes in strawberry, lemon lime, and secret formula. No Arr. butterscotch. <laughs> So anyway, <laughs> pulled it into port. George, <laughs> or pulled it out. George and I go way back to the Bragg show. Some of you might remember that one. Yes. I was Thunderclease, the robot neighbor. Bragg, I blast you. He was the father. He was a little the father. You are the wonderful father. You know, I always say to Carrie, Carrie comes to me and he seeks as the young people do. You see how young and handsome he is. Carrie says to me, Father, have you the good advice? And I had to tell him the truth because the last time we went shopping, I said, Carrie, when you press the front area, how you say, into the up escalator handrail to receive the pleasure sensation, this is awkward for shoppers on their way down to the fat lady dress store. <laughs> That's a true story. It's a true story. <laughs> Just a good five minutes at Macy's like that. We we tell that one down at the Powerpuff Mall. Have you ever noticed that in Aqua Team? The mall is called Powerpuff Mall. Hint, hint, wink, wink. And they, they redid the Powerpuff Girls, but it didn't go so well. Why, why is that? Why the Powerpuff Girls people didn't work, you think? I don't know. They've been doing The Simpsons for years without me, too. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. He did a good Homer Simpson impersonation. The very, very first episode of the last season. What's the, what's the old boy who plays Rick and Morty? I don't even Justin, whatever. Really? Yeah, he was a guest star. He was the beef jerk. You master. remember everything. Yes, I do. I was going to some really good, real good dirt. Anyway, so he he was a beef jerky man. We're going to have an adventure right now with lasers and this and that and the other. And so he was more Morty than Rick. Right. Which I heard he really gets sloshed in the booth when he does Rick. He's really drunk in the booth when he does Rick. Like, How many shots have you taken him? At one time, it was like about eight. Uh, oh. <laughs> Yeah, man. That must be nice. Right. Hey, man, it's not your chunks express. You know what I'm saying? You're in the booth. Okay, let me take a little shot over there. Okay, Mori. We're right. ready to go. What if he's ever Earl on the microphone? Let's get it on. Oh, can we get somebody here to clean this up, please? I need 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Right? Anyway, <laughs> George was the, the was a mouth. Oh, me he lost his mouth, and George did the... I was in the studio. I was adopting that day when he was phone patching. You were with I was listening to it. Uh, you, you were, they had you on the phone. Like, okay, give, give us some homework. Give us some homework. Wait a minute, I'm trying to do it. March! <laughs> my bad. What, what's like one of my favorite ones? Oh, uh, Kang, Kang and Kodos come down to collect Maggie. They realize a Treehouse of Horror, Maggie, Maggie belongs to Kang, who accidentally did something with Marge. Opens the door. Hold on, Marge, I'll get. Oh, great Mormons. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if only I could get the 325,000 an episode that Mr. Castellaneta gets. Wow, how do you know that? It's been doing his research. Uh, well, I was friends Is with Forbes. Marcia. No, Marshall Wallace was my buddy. Forbes did a story on me and Dana. You're kidding. Forbes magazine. This young kid, he could have been one of 12. At Denver Comic Con. He comes up and says, Hi, Mr. Meads, I'm from Forbes magazine. Forbes magazine? 
I guess I want to see how the other half lives. Wow. <laughs> so we got Jay-Z over here. We got Gary Frylock Means over here. The only thing I got in common with Jay-Z is we share the same birth date. Not the same bank account, believe you me. But yeah, Dana Snyder and I did an interview for Forbes magazine. I'll be doing this in Denver Comic Con a couple of years back, right? And Dana's interview goes like this. Well, I'm blessed and I'm happy I have my house and my cars and my wife. And this and that, I live out in L.A. Blah, 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 blah. They get to me like, well, I watch dishes in the dish pit here in Atlanta. <laughs> you know, yeah, but you don't do that anymore. <laughs> as God is my witness, I'm going to stay out of the dish pit. And that was wrong. And I remember you came up to me one year and you said, anything going on anywhere? And I'm like, it was the year the agent pulled the rug out from under me. So you and I were both like, we're under yeah. going, you didn't finish that good garnish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we laugh about it now. Let me tell you. Uh, hey, when you hit bottom in our profession, you really... Somebody goes, uh, they asked me a day at the con one day, they said, well, what's your biggest fear as an actor to voice sound? Cancellation! Cancellation. You, were you there that year at uh, Dragon Con one year, some kids stood up and asked a question. They hadn't dropped yet, so his voice was still squeaky. So he, he was dressed as Superman. He was like, how did you guys feel when the show was canceled? And Dave and Matt and all, everybody from those, the whole crew got yeah, there. And I looked down at, at, at Dave and I was like, when, when were we canceled? When was that? And Dave Willis goes, uh, next question. Surprise. <laughs> yeah. Dave, I had one of my funniest and most awkward, disgusting moments ever. In uh, the, the one and only time we ever did Comic Con in uh, San Diego, Diego. Uh, 2006. And Dave leans over, you know, it's 99. Oh, and see that was before my see this is the goat. This is OG. <laughs> OG. Original gangster. Okay. James leans over. And it was first off, I'm Alan Rubin from Blues Brothers walking into the Palace Hotel. It's like this giant room. I look at Keith Crawford, our, our senior producer, and I go, We'll never fill it. It's a barn. Keith goes, Keith never gets more more than right about here. I've never, you know, Keith, you ever talked to Keith? I couldn't forget about my line. Never never gets never gets much more than right. He says we we'll watch and see what happens. Packed to the gills. Now, out of the zillions of fans, here's how Dave Willis's mind works. God bless him. And Dave's one of my all-time favorites. But he goes, hey, hey, right where Carl is, we'll, hey, we'll go there. Space Ghost was glad to be here. There's a guy in a Space Ghost costume who forgot, ladies and gentlemen, plug the children's ears now who forgot the underwear part. <laughs> and to borrow from Howard Stern, fully engorged a complete inch and a half, thrilled to be out on the town, and Dave's sitting there, I'm trying to answer a serious question. For those of you who don't know, Dave Willis is a co-creator of Aqua Teen, and he's the voice of Carl. And he's over there like, hey, 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 What's happening over there on the side? And I'm trying to get on the phone. I swear. I swear. And that was Dave's takeaway from the whole event. See, now I've disgusted everybody. Now, band to Kingsport, Tennessee, and Huntsville. Space Ghost cosplayer. Which town will have a razor going on? Or maybe it was a full razor if it was that big. Space Ghost, too dirty for New York. What do you Bruce said penis? I'm sorry, folks. We used to work for a network called Don't Swim. <laughs> Adult Swim, not Boy's Life. You know they were going to give the Aquatine video game a rated A for adult? Yeah. Rating? The, the video games ratings board? They wanted to give the, the Zombie Ninja Pro Am game for PS2 an A for adult rating. And I was like, really? Why? Was, is there a hot coffee segment with Carl and Dusty Gazanas? I don't know. I'm in the shake. What's going on? Something's going on there. It's some of those toys they sell, oh. you know, like the plushies. Yeah, like where they have the characters of the plushies. There's oh, one. Know. There's one that's got a picture of Shake on the side of it, and the chick is giving him mouth to mouth, but she's sucking his straw, and he's kind of leaning back, like. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> size these. See those covers. Those people, people scare me. <laughs> yeah. He sold his Moon Knight shoes. Did, did they give you some Moon Knight shoes? No. They they made they had his green but, shoes made. I'll say this. I had a decent enough week. Ladies and gentlemen, go ahead and take your photos now. <laughs> new heels. I got new heels. You got the Timberlands on you. Thank you very much.
That's old school right there. Not one damn person interested. Look at that. <laughs> I put my feet up and show the whole audience my new heels. Hey, at least you didn't take your pants off. Plus, they make me There are some battles with Mr. Lowe. Oh, no, we never got the first world move. Pants swap the room. <laughs> first and he'll get some people to come up or two feet. to swap pants. Tell us about the swap pants. That we do. You, have you seen No, them? you do it. I've heard. Oh, I know I do. <laughs> Tell us, explain it to us. I got How the pants swap people. Every year at Dragon Con, my, my panels get weirder and more uncomfortable. Every year I get a, a, I. a surgical nurse who brings me the beacon of normal out in, out in not insane harbor sitting next to me. Every year a surgical nurse brings me a new instrument for a gift. Last year was a neonatal rib spreader, I swear. And at some point I just got bored and out of the depths of my sick mind, I said, wait a minute, it's time for America's new fun game. Let's trade pets. So if you go to Dragon Con this year, I guarantee you will see another installment of Let's Trade Pants. Or oh, if you're unlucky enough, you'd be in it. Now the weird thing, well, yeah, and the weird thing is we had a male-female edition last time around, but it was no damn fun because they both fit. He got, really? he got, and I made a joke. He was in his skinny jeans, and she was in their they, butt. Yeah, they could both. It was just like. It was like they're both Twiggy models or something. <laughs> and it was bizarre. I mean, for me, the most... Well, you got to get varying sizes, George. You can't get them both the same size. I never thought it would fit. Normally, I grab, like, you know, the kid right here in the middle next to his, his uncle and father. And, <laughs> and then, like, you know, I get one of the guys who likes to go to the snack bar. I'll find it. That's 680 pounder. And then I, I rip off the match game theme, and people start undressing. And usually there's a whole Only space line. goes to get people to get half naked. I get away with murder. The Dragon Con, you. they love me. And last year I even looked at one guy and I said, you know, that reminds me, later I have to head down to the synagogue. And then after that, I said, I said, I said, I said, I said you know, Carrie, that reminds me, later I must go to the store and buy a tater tot and two grapes. <laughs> You mean a banana that you want. And everywhere else I go, it's like, he's a dirty. He's a horrible old man. <laughs> let's, let's no, no, no. Check this out. I used to do guerrilla warfare theater, right? In Atlanta, Georgia, back in the day. Back in the day when I was scrimping and scrimping. This was pre Frylock days, okay? Before everything was all gravy and mandolins and violins or whatever. Anywhere you said that movie. So I'm doing this, they're doing this show. You parachute in, you build a set, you parachute out, you know what I'm saying? So I'm in some little podunk town, maybe by Boston, Georgia, some little some little rinky dink town somewhere Hillsville. at a high school, right? And I, I remember this distinctly. I never forget this. I said, remember, remember, kids, put a hat on your little soldier, say sex. I got back to the some some parent heard the kid, the kid runs off. Mom and Daddy, guess what that man said? In that play we saw. He <laughs> told me to put a hat on our little soldier. Which one of you <laughs> told them kids that bum bum bum? Georgia to put a hat on the sofa. He's like, no, never, never, never talk about Shake Shake. No, 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 no. No, no. Well, y'all know about this abortion law that's going on, right? In Georgia. Uh oh. So say, say, Just say, remember, say. it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine him donating the sperm bank and all these kids come up? Mom, where's my dinner? <laughs> I want some Oreos and I want them now. <laughs> no, the dirtiest thing I've got right now is a wall sized television. Have you heard about that? There's a wall sized television coming. I don't know if it's Sony or what, but I mean the size of your wall, like Jetsons. And the problem, the problem is, it's like I can't imagine how you do like the aspect ratio or whatever, but you know. The first thought I had was, if you're sitting around, you, you young people watching the dirty movies, and the first thing I could think of... No, 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 young people don't watch the dirty movies. No, 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 no. They make the dirty movies. There you are. They don't watch them. I couldn't think of anything, but you know, I mean, forget the art films you could watch, forget about the, the travel logs you could enjoy. All I could think of was that and buttocks the size of the Azores. Isn't it curved? <laughs> I mean, the, the TV. <laughs> the TV. <laughs> That's an actual disease. Did you know that? I heard it's if, if your thingy lingy is curved, I think that guy on the left's got the A's. Well, there's, oh, there's, no. there's a term, well, I'm serious, there's a medical term for it. You should get that checked out. <laughs> I guess. If, if you're, if you're One down. curved. <laughs> if you're like this, you really should. You know. you know, it's important to stay hydrated. Remember that, kids. We'll take a break right now just to remind you, kids, to stay hydrated. I don't know how much time we get. How much time they give us for this thing? What time is it? We'll give it we'll give it the old couple oh god we're almost a half hour in already
Do you guys got any questions? Yeah, questions. The guy in the back with a cool shirt. Uh -oh. The owner of the show. Wait, 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 you did it. Man up. See how he threw me in with a He came to me in a dream life. He's not even I say other. Anyway. Space Ghost walks hard about the devil. Can you tell us the Adam West story? Adam West. What happened? Adam West. Oh, the Adam. You want to hear the Adam West story? He does. I don't know about that. It's one that I don't know. It's my favorite story. It's a little long. One year I'm sitting with Lou Ferrigno. At another show. I got a couple of Lou Ferrigno stories. That's the story. Well, I, I, I'll tell you one. Don't ever go in the bathroom after Lou. <laughs> one year, I swear to you, one year, no, the damn things pop out green flexing and looking for blood. <laughs> I was the lid down. One year at Dragon Con, two of them got out. Down in Florida, I was actually, and this is really scary, at one point I was a deputy sheriff in Hernando County, Florida. I was licensed. I carried the whole bit. And luckily I had. I had my sidearm that year. I popped an entire magazine into these two things crawling across the floor. Well, they split into a thousand pieces. Right out of Terminator, the damn things reassemble and start coming after me. Did they all look like Lou Lou? That's not the Adam West story. So <laughs> they were sitting together and Lou, I was having to have a heart test that year, like every year. And Lou's going, oh, my cousin Benny, one year we go to a wedding, he gets up to dance, dead. Yeah, heart attack. Then I go to another family reunion, and just like two years later, my cousin Vinny, he gets up, he starts to dance, dead, heart attack. He's telling me heart attack stories. They say, okay, it's time for the parade. They put me in the parade. I'm riding around. Adam was just two cars ahead of me in the Batmobile. Smacks of desperation. And I'm into speaking in desperation. I'm like in an Aries K, two cars back, that somebody sawed the roof off. And it's got a dot matrix label on the side. People are like on the side of Beach Street going, the hell's George Lowe? <laughs> so at the last minute, why aren't you wearing your Space Ghost gear? No. no. Not even the mask? No, just like now. The cow, man. No, 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 no. So some genius hands me a megaphone at the last minute. Yeah, that's safe. That ought to work out just fine. So the whole parade route, I'm on Adam like a cheap suit. That is not the real Batman. The real Batman is not 112 years old. <laughs> Batman doesn't keep tucks in the utility belt. The real Batman doesn't keep suppositories in the utility belt. <laughs> whole parade, he, he never retaliated. Not you know, The whole crowd's laughing as I go by, beating poor Adam to death. He never even gave you a look like. He waits. No, you know lunch. You don't lunch at Dragon Con. The place empties out like somebody dropped level four CDC Ebola in a bottle on the floor. <laughs> the whole room empties out because now the 680 pound children are getting pizza. Now it's pizza. <laughs> but Adam walks up like a cat on one of those animal shows, just kind of taking his time. Lou Ferrigno's next to me going, yeah, my cousin Ernie. Yeah. <laughs> Lou keeps Is that Lou or Arnold? And here, because it's not like Arnold and Lou. Never made side contact. Looks at my pictures. He's got his assistant. And he goes, Wow, Fred. <laughs> Things are real dead here at George's table. Turns <laughs> <laughs> around, walks off. Lou, not knowing Adam and I have done this for years, Lou goes, Don't worry about him. He's an asshole. <laughs> Lou didn't have the cochlear implants at that point, so he was still loud like me. That's why Adam was story. Rob, I hope that wasn't a letdown. Was that okay, Rob? Thank you, sir. Rob, Rob, Rob got everybody. Stand up, Rob. Rob's like this. Rob, Rob is here. Yeah. What a guy. Great guy. Now I gotta know about this guy back here that looks like Drax. And is dressed like Thanos. <laughs> Are you cosplaying Thanos Drax or Drax Thanos? Or is that for work? <laughs> I didn't realize there was a cosplay today. Ah, <laughs> that's a Drax answer if I ever heard one. My cameraman knows about that one because he was trying to be perfectly still one night, but that was that's a difference. That new overnight courier, male centurion. So my first time that I met Lou Ferrigno was 2006. San Diego Comic Con. 
That was the first kind of event in my life. A great one. Aqua team was that, you know, going along and everything. First, I never done a kind in my life. They go, okay, Terry, boom, you're in the fire. Like, okay, what do I do? Here's your itinerary. All that shit was out of me. All that stuff. All that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All that stuff. It's always say fecal matter. <laughs> <laughs> I almost missed the booze cruise, for God's sakes. We've been a travesty of justice. We got we had to get one of those rickshaw guys. No. To get us to the booze cruise. You did not. The white guys? Yeah, the white guy. Oh. It was me and the guy who created Korgoth, the barbarian. Yeah. We may have had a pilot that didn't go nowhere after that. And of course, I had to ask him about Sounds the Sounds like my heart medicine, Korgard. Korgard, <laughs> the barbarian. Oh, I'm sorry. That they tried to pilot on those swimming, didn't go anywhere. So it was me, him, and his lady friend. And we're the rich child. We had to get the fastest one. This guy had calves like this. <laughs> so we, we go and he's going to move out of the way. So many people coming through. We're trying to make the booze cruise. I knew two things was going on in that booze cruise one, free food, two, free booze. <laughs> so I had to get there. <laughs> Very imperative. So like I said, the itinerary was out of date. I had no handler. San Diego Comic Con, and I got no handler. Nobody go, who this means now? None of that. So I'm running through the buildings. I'm, I'm jumping around my story. I'm running through the buildings looking for my panel. And Lou Ferrigno sitting in the corner in one of the buildings doing this whole thing. You know what I'm saying? I was like, hey, Mr. Ferrigno, my name's Karen Means. What's the problem? I'm saying, hungry for us. I know you heard me. I'm left for a panel. I got to go by. <laughs> Lou probably looks at me and goes, what the hell was that? <laughs> <laughs> that was the first time I met him. But anyway. But anyway, still, still in San Diego. I'll get back to Blue in a minute. So we're going along. Rickshaw guy, fastest rickshaw guy they had, because he got us there. But the boat was pulling off. We already had one runner. He's got to go to the bathroom. Out. He's heard the story before. <laughs> the boat was pulling off for the pier, right? And David Snyder is on the back of a, come on, Terry, jump, you can make it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, it's like one of those B. Comedies, you know what I'm saying? Like slow motion, up, jumping off the pier with the core guy. I don't even know. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. I thought I was gonna do a homer, like we was in the, in the 3D world. Okay, jump there. Okay, boy. Jeez. <laughs> but I made it. I made it. Didn't even get you wet. You running cakes. I'm talking about. They had those big old prongs. Those big old. Scripts, like we say in the hood. The big scripts, man. I couldn't miss that. And I met uh, Aaron Bruder from the Boondocks. He had the top level of the yacht. Oh, wow. It was just him and a very attractive Asian young lady who was shooting pool. And I asked Mr. McBruder, I said, uh, is that your wife? He was like, no, I said, it better be. It should be. You should marry her right now, man. She was gorgeous. Anyway, so I look at Aaron McBruder and I say, hey, uh, can a brother get on the Boondocks? You know what I'm saying? What's the deal with that there? Yeah. He was like, he was me dead in my face and said, oh, we only hire SAG actors. And I was like, crushed. I was like, first of all, how do you know I wouldn't say? What's been going on around, what's been going around about old Friday like this? Through the grapevines and shit. You know, I'm like, he knew I wasn't saying. I don't worry about unions. And I'm like, wait a minute though, you're Aaron Brewery. You This is your show. You created the show. You can have your grandmothers, your aunts, your pet roach. Anybody he wants to be on this show. <laughs> but we you know, got shut down by it. Created boondocks. But anyway, there's more to that story, but it gets a little more adult from there. But I'll finish that later. So that was the first time I saw Lou Ferrigno. Second time, I was at Denver Comic Con. Big, huge con. Kevin Conroy there. He was there. Uh, what's 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 the guy's name from uh, Princess Bride? Who rhymes all the time? So stop Divine? saying rhymes. The old gentleman. Divine. Yeah, uh, you'll get it later on the way home. Anyway, he was there. We had lunch. I had lunch with Lou. Oh, Nick. Lou sat right here. I'm sitting right there. I was like, Mr. Ferrigno, you might not remember this, but I met you way back in 2006. And uh, I was rushing to get to a panel and everything. I was trying to get where I was going and I shook your hand real fast. And, and he looked at me dead in my face and said, The important thing is you remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 So I'm scared I'm, to argue price with him, too. I'm a, big, I'm a big deal with the swapping. No, they say he's a great guy. They say he showed up Thursday uh, before the car started. And had somebody go to the grocery store and then went to the homeless shelter and just threw out food and stuff like that. But there's another side to do too. But I'm getting to that. So we're having lunch and everything. Kai starts winding down. Weird Al Yankovic was there. It was just a lot of big names there. Chris Sabbat, you know, Dragon Ball Z, all these guys are there. And uh, I go up to Lou and I see he had no, no line or anything like that. So I'm a big fan of the swap. You know, I geek out when I meet people who have been in the business for many, many years or whatever. So I go to Mr. Frigno, uh, I believe in doing the swap, no swap you know what I'm saying? I give you one of mine, you give me one of yours, we sign, we take a picture. He looked me dead in my face and said, I don't flop. I don't flop. 
I think I knew him 15 years so ago. So what do you do? a good picture with me. What do you do when the Hulk tells you? You don't swap it because the yeah. selfie's out of the question, I'm saying to myself. I just stood there like for a few seconds. I was like, okay, Hulk, see you later. You know what I'm saying? But we're out. We're out yank of it. Great guy. I call him, call him coming from the bathroom. Not what you think. He's coming from the bathroom. He probably had to shoot loose stuff as I was coming from the bathroom. <laughs> carry coming. No, he was in the, he was in the green room area. He's coming from the bathroom. And I saw the hair. First thing I saw was, I was like, where are out? He turns around. And I'm like, yeah, my name is Kerry Means. I'm the voice of Frylock from Michael T. Hunger Force. I'm right now. Heard me. He's like, oh, I know Frylock. Y'all heard of me? Weird Al Yankovic yeah, heard of me. So I was like, wow, cool. He's like, yeah, man, let's get a picture, let's take a selfie, and we'll do a swap. He had three tables, dude. Three? Three tables all lined up in the L shape. So you had to go around the corner from where he was to pick from all his picks. It was a tough decision, though. It was like, got all, from all of his whole career. I had him in the old radio days, and uh, I never saw a guest more angry. The Scotty Brothers. He used to be with Scotty Brothers, which is basically the music equivalent of congratulations, you've signed with the Mafia. <laughs> <laughs> we know a few promoters like that. Well, we loved him. And we had the number one show in Atlanta, so we could play an eight-minute record. When he saw that they had released Like a Surgeon, or I think it was right about Like a Surgeon, he looked and he freaked out and he started screaming and cussing and yelling, we got a second runner, and a third and a fourth. Seize them, Rob! Seize them! Oh, there's no fire. Oh, no, the anime He's flying away. Yeah, I'm giving away free soup down the hall. He's trying to give up. Ew, losers. Whips. Oh, well, well, look, three more. Three more right there. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. Yeah, Replace yeah. those losers with real people. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I hope you aren't mad at me. I'm not the Scotty Brothers. No, thank you for telling me. But back in the UHF days, I've actually got, right out, about the mm -hmm. got an autograph spatula Spatula from Spatula City. Sweet. Yep. Oh, that's nice. I love that movie. So dumb, but a great theme song, too. Who else was in that? Michael Richards? Richards character was creepy in that. I can't remember. Well, oh, we Victoria, all know what happened to him. Victoria Jackson from Jackson <laughs> Elvis in there. Yeah? Yeah. Sweet. It was a fun movie though. It, 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 this fake commercials were the best. Spatula City! Buy nine Spatula! I must admit, George, I'm, 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 I'm unfamiliar with the film. UHF. Oh, you're a yeah, yeah, he takes over a little TV series. I need to watch it again then. I Kevin need... McCarthy was yeah, in it. He was like the big actor in that movie. Yeah, the Invasion right. of the Body Snatchers. Where they open up the pod, you know, when it's two Rush Limbaugh's. <laughs> I'm going to talk for a minute now about the Republican Party and what's going on. <laughs> and then three of them open up and it's more Rush Limbaugh's. <laughs> <laughs> and then you shoot them and they break up into pieces and they form up again. What's the, what's the mouth of what's the mouth in Atlanta? Uh, he's kind of like Russ. Oh, uh, not Clark Howard. Clark no, was a Clark consumer Howard. guy. I'm talking about. If you call your cable company for a minute, I'm Clark Howard. Oh, yeah. Yo, you made him sound too dynamic. <laughs> the version was too pretty for Clark. You gotta take that while driving an ice pick through your toe. Hey, check this out. Nothing cracked me up more than doing a Dragon Con one year with the voice of Bill, the voice of Goofy for the last 30 years, Bill Farmer. Great guy. And Rob Paulson from the anime. Yeah, great guy. They're in the back of the show, man. We're on our way to the panel. This is like Sunday at Dragon Con one year. And they're just going back and forth doing voices, 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 voices. All of a sudden you hear Farmer say in Goofy's voice, Well, okay, just a tip then. <laughs> <laughs> I about died. And I didn't think to pull my phone out and go, you just say that one more time. <laughs> Should I tell you the band story? Should I tell you the band story? Tell me the band story. You all know how good an Orson Welles Maurice LaMarche does. Because if you watch Ed Wood, it's Vincent D'Onofrio in the bar being Orson, but it's our friend Maurice LaMarche's voice coming out. Well, you must follow your own voice in the film business, Mr. Wood. So I get in, it's me, John DiMaggio, Billy West, and poor Phil Lamar who's on the horn trying to talk to that special someone on the other end being all romantic and sweet. And, and here's, I do 
I do the young horse in from like the Mercury Theater days. You can see them coming over the hill now in Gower's Corner. <laughs> DiMaggio prefers drunk horse in from the Paul Masson commercials. Oh, a lovely table of mine for Paul Masson. <laughs> Billy does the one where he went crazy in a session and walked out on a half million dollar session because it was here under protest beef burgers. <laughs> and the three of us are all doing Orson Welles at the same time. So I'm back there going, I can see them beginning to emit some form of a plasma ray from this large device extending from the top of the ship. Billy's back there. We know Fjord in Norway where the freshest Icelandic cod is harvested. The Marshall's up front. Well, is the same for that. Phil finally goes, guys! It was like dueling Morrison's, so here's poor Phil like, I didn't know, that's great you're pregnant. <laughs> well, you know, if you are in Norway, they're beginning to emit some form of a plasma ray. Hey, you pissed Phil Amaro off, poor Phil. Phil, Phil, Phil hates He was trying to set up the date for when he got back oh, home. Phil hates All right, he was talking to one of those uh, ladies of the evening meeting at the hotel there. You know, you know, they should have something like that, I think. Maybe. maybe. But there's children here, I won't go any farther. <laughs> <laughs> Marvin from Pulp Fiction. Phil said blows up. Yeah, they shoot him in the back of the car. By accident. Yeah. That's the one thing I disagree with that movie <laughs> on. If, I'm, if I was Samuel L. Jackson's character, it, Quentin Tarantino went there and said the word that, you know, we feared it, that it was said several times. I think Samuel L. Jackson's character just went, ah! Oh, I'm sorry about that, man. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, but that word just does something to me. You know what I'm saying? I think I would have got fired and they would have probably got Samuel Jackson to take my place. He told me he almost lost a gallon of water in that scene. Who? Uh, Phil. Because he said Samuel was so scary. Samuel had played where he was supposed to play. Look at the big brain on Brad! He did that whole scene, but there was just one take. And they shot it on the fly. They didn't have room for a ton of stuff. But on one take, Marvin starts to do his line. He turns around and says, I don't remember asking you. <laughs> You know, scares me. But instead of turning back to Brad, the rest of the take, he continues doing the same speech and just staring there at Phil is. like that. <laughs> <laughs> and Phil said, Phil said, when it looked like he was starting to cry, I even said, you look like you're starting to cry. He said, he scared the living crap out of him. <laughs> well, you know, you gotta remember, he was fresh off Mad TV then. He was doing a UPS guy and all that. He wasn't no, he wasn't nobody then. Thought he was getting ready to lose his big Hollywood shot. You know, he probably soiled his underwear. Sammy Lush was mad at him now. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. He made a racing strike. I know he. He scared me out. Hash Browns, we call him in the show. He <laughs> <laughs> made himself up some well, fire you know, babies. The <laughs> homos make their own gravy. Ochre patties, if you will. <laughs> Never had the ochre patties on a long car drive? Oh, it's terrible. Nothing you can do, throw them out the window or look for a drive through a laundromat. <laughs> throw them out the window, that's what that's I Throw them out the window. Yeah, they go. And then you'll hear the ochre patties. I'm going commando for the rest of the day. You know what I'm saying? I think I've still got a pair stuck to welcome to week four. <laughs> it's a long drive. Anyway, so sorry, you guys. Questions? <laughs> Questions? Anybody? Yes, sir. Uh, I saw on the internet, which is you know a reliable source, of course. Uh, basically Aqua Team was canceled because Lazo just was tired of it, he says. That's what everybody said. Do you always want to take this one? I, I was definitely supposed to. One man asked. He said uh, Lazo was tired of Aqua Team, so he did that. Well, <laughs> you know, it's funny you mention how these things, uh, the knife can fall as quickly as it does. I think there's an argument somewhere between Space Coast, Coast to Coast went out while it was still popular and on top. There was like some of that, and I agree with some of that logic, but then there's the side of your brain where you're going, yeah, but I like the money. <laughs> the money was good. But then there was also this kind of imperious wave it off one day like somebody went by Lazo and he was just like having a bad day. Chain smoking the pal mouths and went, <laughs> Space Ghost is gone. And a lot of it was like the very Louis the Fourteenth. I love the guy. We used to have some folk art adventures even back in the day. Did I just see a rat run up the wall? <laughs> you don't have rats in here, do you, Rob? Uh, no, of course not. 
in Florida, their biggest ponies <laughs> can actually take the little fella here at Christmas time, forget them all. The best thing is the, the Polk County rat-sized pony ride. You can get four or five of the youngsters out there, let them put on the little cowboy hat, ride the rat around, <laughs> throw down Vienna sausage cheese is not enough. It's got to be a meat-based product. And we have some of that is like last one just goes, I don't like that, that's gone. <coughs> But I do remember the time he defended me. In the old days, when we first started, you always recorded the same. Carrie knows as well as any pro in the business. It was always like, oh, page six, line five, take nine. See you, page seven, take two, whatever. They were slaving me. And they were missing stuff that fell in between the takes, as is my custom. And I remember we took a break an hour in, I turned the corner and went to get a coffee and I heard Lazo go, you ever stop tape on him again and you're gone. So the rule became, I hit the room, whether I got anything or not, it didn't matter. But you just hit play record, sit back and the, the, the engineers loved it. And thankfully Dave and Matt, when we did our antenna scene together, that's how that happened. Do you know that I, I, I auditioned, I put this in air quotes, for each and every character on Squid Millers at least three to five times. <laughs> I thought it was an audition. I assumed that I was auditioning. Okay, Carrie, now read early. Now read for the mayor. Now read for the sheriff. Now read for early son. Now read for granny. I'm talking about every single character on that show. I was like, I gotta get one of these. They were using me as a scratch. They had to be. They had to oh, use yeah, me as a scratch. Yeah, yeah. This is how early should sound. Listen to it. This is how so Scratch tracks always where you have like some producer somewhere, you know, and it, I could never control it. I would I say, well, boy, that's so good. You ought to just use that. You know, it's always some guy who's a salesperson at the ad agency going, save like never before <laughs> during our summer of values hotbed sale. Right now, queen size mattresses with new Simon L4000 semen protector. <laughs> they wipe right off. And so they would play that for George when he's in the booth to you hear how the spots should go. Simon L4000 semen protector for your mattress and save like never before. And that's how it would come out. So, yeah, it's always like some PA or somebody's nephew doing the. And in the smaller yeah. markets, there was always some awkward tag. Right. Did you ever see a commercial for something called the Red House? This is completely true. Uh, Two guys travel. Have you seen it? Yeah, it's right. Two there. guys travel the country and they do these crazy jingles. Well, one of them was at the Red House. I swear to you, I'm not making it up. Google it. Where black people and white people buy furniture. <laughs> and they aired the commercial. Was this here in Tennessee? This <laughs> it was a small market for sure. And this guy came in and worked on the loading dock, and I swear it was like, you know, my name is Roe Jean. I, I like to play cards and, you know, <laughs> hang with my friends and get my swerve on. And I love buying mattresses at the Red House. Oh, <laughs> so there's some white guy, I enjoy running and beating my wife and, and drinking it to my back. I love buying this beautiful four piece dinette at the Red House. <laughs> Dig it up. Dig it up and tell me I'm a liar. Check it out at the table tomorrow and say, oh, it's at the Red House, I swear. And oh, that was I don't even want to know why they call it the Red House. Black people live, white people buy furniture. The craziest damn thing I've ever seen. I don't have the guts to do, do these that. people have modern technology? Do they have like the internet or something like that? Do they know what's going on on the outside? World? My biggest crime. Do they know that the South lost the war? Did the South really lose? Kerry, being a true friend, pulled me aside and straightened me out on this because one year I did kind of mangle a, a, a song by Digital Underground. I made it sound a little too Space Ghost. I came that from a good. party to get naughty, get my rocks on, eat popcorn, watch you move your body to the pop song. I'm singing, ding-a-lingin', funky beat, bringing everybody swinging in the club where I keep the J-A-C-C-Y style. R&B mixing it with a hip-hop drum beat, champagne in my hand, won't be long till I'm gone. It's just the same old song. Booyaka! Drop the mic, Drop the mic. It really wasn't as soulful. That little Sammy, could you make it a little more candy, man, babe? That's funny, because when I went in to do the uh, the Aquatine Christmas album, I'm, I'm supposed to sing Our Holy Night, right? So 
Little did they know I'm classically trained. So I've, I've sang in the Atlanta Opera Chorus, and the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra Chorus, done tons of musical theater, so cool. Shakespeare in the park, and all of that. So I got the classical pipes, baby. So I go in there, and I'm saying, Oh, holy night, the stars are bright and shining. Did it, doing it straight, right? And Dave Willis looks at me through the glass, and he goes, Sharon, yeah. that was beautiful. I'm like, thanks, Dave. He said, now can you F it up and do it like that? <laughs> They didn't call me for the MF Doom album. They didn't call me for that. Your guess is good as mine. They used my voice in sound bites, like they used some Thunderclick stuff and some Frylock stuff. Sound bites throughout the recording. They had Dana all over it and Dave was all over it and uh, I guess they scared of my rap skills, man. Cause you know, that last season I wrote my own funky rap lyrics. The very last season of Rocket Team. I got Jack by the Cosby, Shop Potato Tots, Busted Moon, Lights, Flea, Moon Rocks, and all that. They, they said, this is your part right here. When I got to the studio, Dave goes, this is your part. I was like, oh, no, 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 no. Ah. I was like, come on, let me hear that beat one more time. I sat out right there and wrote out. And I got a credit for being a musical producer on Aqua Team on the IMDb. See, and I still didn't get a writer's credit. No. It's on there. But for a long time, on IMDb, I was known as Dick Means. <laughs> Dick Means? Dick Means. You know, I found out. So well, like well, star. well, wait, wait, wait. My, my, my girlfriend told me that she said, well, she's my wife now, hey, baby. At the time, she was like, oh, oh, no, we got to do something about this. I was like, no, 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 baby, all I got to do is put the word B-I-G in front. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll be good. Say, so, no, no, we got to change that. So I come to find out. I, I figured out why I was being known as Dick Me. Remember Dick or so? The yeah. episode Dick or so that we did? I don't think I remember that. Wallenberg. But I know oh, Carl. <laughs> Carl was going to get his member ripped off. And Wallenberg was available. So, in the end credits, everybody's name had D I C K in front of it. So it was like Dick Means, Dick Snyder, Dick Willis. So, it's, here's some intern at I and he go, his name was Dick Means. That's had to be it. That's, that's what I'm figuring. It, it was it. You know, so it finally got changed. So Anyway, I got, I got, I went too far, didn't I? Where else can you go? Hey, you know, it be a mental case. I mean, it's just awesome for us. I did not know you were in the symphony. Yes, I was in the chorus. You're a wild man. In the bass. Basa profunda, sir. I scraped the bottom. Russian bass. That's me. Old man river. Incredible. Yeah, man, musical theater, man. That's how I learned all the best jokes from me. I tear Frank Sinatra a new one every time. Take your clothes off, babe. Let's pull down that the cotton shift. And you know, that's why he's falling. You know, he's falling. Thank you. Seth McFarlane, he, uh, he was Wayne the Brain McLean on the show where they were trying to win bar dollars. This was back when Family Guy was this young. And uh, it had just on the air. He was Wayne the Brain McLean. Maybe I'll be my own girlfriend. Well, maybe I will. Anyway. So, so he was trained, he was vocally trained by Frank Sinatra's uh, vocal coach. Oh, no kidding. He, that's why he was always singing with Frank Jr. and there's always jazz in his shows like Discovery, I mean, uh, Orville, and all like that. What's our good you? And the, kid, the kid who interviewed me from Ford was trying to get me on the, on the, on the show. He's like, I'm, I'm going to try to get you on Family Guy. He's like, bad news, Carrie, it only takes sad actors again. <laughs> Duff to us. Then I had another voice actor. Who I won't say that name or something like Who said that I could, he could get me in the sack in front of a huge room of people at the concert somewhere. Like, I'm going to get Kerry in the sack and he's not going to pay a dollar. That was three years ago. I was still out of the sack. <laughs> hey, he said it in front of a whole crowd of people. I was like, y'all heard him. But he's on like the board of directors or something like that, but he couldn't swing that. He could swing it. Go ahead and swing it, baby. Are you sacking? Yep. I, but I have to. I find your day was only 50 bucks to get in. Well, no, you know what? Not, no, I mean, now I've got some brutal looking dues for this year. I'm probably, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to have it or not. I had to do it because of the league on FXX, where you would go in, and the amazing thing was FX pays at the absolute peak of the cable scale. Oh, well. Mom, rest her soul. I lost my mom last July. I'm still not together from that. But she went with me to the first session. It's an ADR studio I use a lot in Tampa. Mm -hmm. And this beautiful blonde is holding the door. And mom goes, oh, you go on, honey. It'll take me forever. And she said, no, ma'am, I'll hold the door. Kelly Preston. That was Mrs. Alive. Travolta stood there five minutes holding the door. Mom had had knee surgery. We got in. I walk in. They set the mic up. I sit down. 
They go, do you have the script? The engineer's sitting there looking at me like this. And I go, uh, yeah. And they're like, okay, we're rolling here. Viewer discretion advised. Give us one more with this. Viewer discretion is advised. A little faster. Viewer discretion is advised. Hold on, we'll check the box. That was it. That's like LA code. For, I think we got it. We're just going to make sure there's playback. 15 seconds. Mom looks at me, looks at the engineer. He goes, he's done. She says, he just got $1,100 for that. <laughs> <laughs> so there are times, you know, Mom, you're up one day, you're down the next, you're up again, and we're waiting. We're just basically waiting for the next wave, aren't we? That's right. Billy he West was, said it best. My old friend Billy West, who's worth $35 million. Same with Tom Kenny, my, my wealthy buddies on the circuit. You yeah, ever see him in person, boy? Take Billy over. says, you know what our next <laughs> job is? Finding our next job. Yeah. That's right. That's it. That's our next That's gig. business. One more question, and then we'll stick a fork in it. Could you tell the story about the... Uh, Convention you were at with uh, Adam West, where you did the announcements. Was that for you or me? For I'm George. going Jeff. I'm really for, bad this year, you guys. For George. Like the old days with Lou, where I'll go, Carrie, yeah, Carrie swung. He's terrible. Fifteen inches, I hear. Everybody said so. No, it's legend. They call him the serpent. <laughs> the serpent on tour. No, they got, he got a snake tattoo on his arm. It, it, it's not as big as the serpent. That's what they call Carrie. What was the question? I'm sorry again, kids, about the... Now Rob's banned me along with Huntsville. <laughs> the uh, convention you did, uh, George, with uh, Adam West, where they asked you to do the announcements and you was really riding Adam. Oh, uh, uh, did I do the announcement? The announcements for the kind you did with Adam West. Oh, 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 oh. Well, one of my notorious ones, right after I met Adam, you know, before we had had him in radio, and it was always very uptight. And I said, Adam, I wrote this character for you. This is radio. And I say, you're going to battle Mr. Drool. And, of course, he immediately saw through it, and he reads the line and goes, you'll never get me alive, Drool. I'm wearing my bat extra absorbent underwear. <laughs> he takes a pause and says, son, that makes Batman sound as if he's not in control of himself. <laughs> and I, I was in radio, I had, I had a little bit of vinegar then too, and I said, Batman's at the auto show. <laughs> well, after he did Space Ghost, he was hit to anything. We killed him, and he loved it. <laughs> so we're in Orlando. They asked me to do the announcements. He actually put the pen down mid-autograph to go, I have to tell you, you know, the grandpa shake. How many people have told me since I did Space Ghost Coast to Coast how much they liked that episode? So I go later, I'm doing the announcements, I'm like, okay, now you know how the game is played. At one o'clock, it's the My Little Pony panel. At two o'clock, it's the Transformers panel. At three o'clock, get a picture of yourself with Adam West at the Batmobile. And be sure to ask him about the dead hooker in the trunk. <laughs> and I look across the room and Adam's doing... <coughs> I can't believe it except... And I said, I didn't say you did it. Blame it on Alfred. Alfred. Alfred did it. Yeah, well, Alfred did it. That's right. Alfred was Alfred. into picking up young girls right. and whacking them. <laughs> oh, don't worry about that smell, Master <laughs> Oh, I just have some simple Febreze and some... we a couple of gallons of bleach. No one will know what happened. <laughs> Alfred, are you killing young girls and burying them in the back cave? <laughs> I'm terribly sorry, Master Dick. Okay, y'all, uh, I guess that's it. I can't go no more anyway. Get a good look at me in the body. He has very expensive intimate cream he has to buy. He's from Stockholm. Normally, 
it's made with a fish emollient. and he has to get to stuff that doesn't smell fish. Well, you know, let's not get into all of that. This kid's gone.